In this video, we're going to take a look at how to display the plot as formatted text in Next.js. And in order for me to do that, I need to install two dependencies. I'm going to install a package called Remark and another one called Remark-HTML. And with these two packages, I will have the opportunity to format my text with line breaks and then display that using line breaks coming from the CMS. And there's going to be a helper that I'm going to be using. I'm going to put that into the lib folder right here, and I'm going to call that markdown to html.js. Now we don't necessarily have markdown, but we could now have it because of this code. So this is going to read the HTML and process the markdown and send us back the resulting uh, value. So that means I can safely call this markdown to HTML method on my plot content as well. So if I now import this particular file in markdown to HTML from, oh, actually it's uh, automatically done for me. And what this will do is run through the plot, but it's going to run it on the server side. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say const plot is equal to await markdown to HTML. So it returns a promise. So I need to wait for this to finish processing. And I'm going to call film response.data.attributes.plot. So that's the you know essentially the entire plot that I get back. And I'm also going to send that as a prop. So once it has finished on the server side, I'm going to send that as a prop back to this particular page that I'm working on at the moment, which also means that I can of course extract that plot and well, let's display that. So where I'm going to display that, well, let's see, uh, we have directed by, so probably in between the review and the, uh, and the director. So I'm going to have an H2 element in here that says plot. I'm going to add the CSS classes later. I'm going to add the div. Uh, let's just add the classes. Uh, right here, which would be tracking wide and font normal text small. And now as an attribute to the div, I'm going to call dangerously set inner HTML and double underscore HTML will be the plot. So I want to set the plot to this div so-called dangerously, meaning that, of course, because I've formatted my text to HTML for markdown, but I don't have markdown, but basically I have those line breaks in, I want to set that HTML and inject it into uh, this div. Let me just add the styles for the plot as well, uh, right here. And hopefully, if I've done everything correctly, let's go and refresh the page, there it is. Now we get the plot and I do get those line breaks here as well. This is awesome. So that's actually going to the content editor for the new hope, which is right here. And let's try to add some markdown. So I'm going to say galactic civil war. I think a double asterisk in a markdown is bold. And there we go. This now works. So this is absolutely amazing. So we can still get the review section and now we get some formatted text as well. So you could really take this to the next level. Now do note that Strapi also has, let me just show that to you as well since we're here, um, and I need to go and modify the actual content type. So let's say that you want to change the plot, you can actually change, or let's just add a new field, that's going to be easier. Uh, it has a rich text editor. I'm going to add this as a test. And for the rich text, so if I go to the content manager and hit save, and then go to the content manager, if I create a new entry, notice that now I have this way of adding some rich text. And that is of course going to be markdown. I can preview this if I want to, but 
was really great is that now I could convert this to valid HTML as well using the method that I just created. So feel free to test this. This is truly, truly a great addition to our Next.js application. But our app looks really great, but there's one teeny tiny issue with it, which we will absolutely need to fix. Uh, and we need to build the profile page as well, of course. So let me just hit log out. Let's open the dev tools. Let's go to application cookies and you see, I don't have any cookie in here, but let's just add one that says username and let's give it a value of anything. And if I refresh the page, well, look at that. My application thinks that I am logged in. So I can actually see, well, it doesn't work, but it, I can actually see um, potentially the profile menu item and I see logout, but I never logged in. I just added a cookie. So there's something that we need to do about this. And we're going to resort to checking not the username, but rather a JSON web token when we do these certain checks if see someone's logged in right because in that case someone must need to specify because someone will have to specify a valid json web token and if they do that only then we allow them to actually see the navigation bar and see the review so we would do some refactoring of our code but the principle is going to still stay the same 